Hello, everybody. I want to welcome you to Experience Jesus with AVJ, Apostle Victor James. We had a glorious worship, my goodness. You know, um, every, everybody, you know, uh, I'm sure you yourself, wherever you were watching from, you enjoyed it. You know, uh, that's husband and wife, um, the Agbamuchis. It was awesome worship. The atmosphere here is charged and ready for the word of God. So I'm, so I'm so excited and I want to welcome you to another edition this morning by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Or whatever the time is, wherever you are watching. This is AVJ and we're getting ready to go into this thing live and direct. And so I'm going to start off. I'm going to start. Uh, what's going on again? I, I'm going to start off. You know, they're trying to work on something. So I, I'm calling them to find out what's going on. I hope I'm doing well. All right. They say I'm doing well. So let's go on here. I'm going to start off with where we stopped um, last time because um, we, we started a series on why your foundation cannot be destroyed. You know. Your foundation cannot be destroyed. So I did part one, part two. So this is going to be the third part today in the name of Jesus. So I need you to tag somebody, call somebody, and let somebody know that we are in to break the bread of life together. You know, and I'm so excited. Everybody, you know, is excited as well. Everybody here, all of us here are excited, you know, like myself. You know, so just get a pen and paper and let's, let's hit the ground running in the name of Jesus. And let's eat from Jesus Christ. All right, our text scripture for the past uh, couple of episodes is Psalm 11, verse number 3. Psalm 11, verse 3. Honestly, I would have loved to put on my, my sunshade because of the lights, you know. <laughs> the lights are entering my eyes, you know. So, all right, Psalm 11, verse 3 that we started off with says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Our first part one, we, dwe we dwelt on foundations, you know, and we've been able to prove that the, found, uh, the believer's foundation is only one, you know. The, so the foundation the psalmist is talking about here is not the foundation for the believer, for the born-again Christian. He's not talking about the believer's uh, foundation. He's talking about the foundation that people generate, people come up with as an idea, to found their belief on defined by the law, the works of the law, or the demands of the law. So that is not the one for the born again Christian, the foundation. And then we saw that first Peter, I mean first Corinthians, Paul said in chapter three, he said, Other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid. And that one that is laid is Jesus Christ. So the foundation of every born again Christian is Jesus Christ. We saw that. And Isaiah testifying, and as I, I think Isaiah 28, verse 16, there about. He says, God said, I lay in Zion a foundation. So the foundation of the believer is not the one that can be destroyed. Because he said, this is the one can be destroyed. Can, our own cannot be destroyed. Therefore, thus say the Lord, God, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation. So the foundation of a born again Christian is laid by God. So whatever your experience in life whatever your challenges whatever your circumstance your foundation was laid by god and because it is laid by god it cannot be destroyed so some the psalm is said in psalm 11 verse 3 he said if the foundations be destroyed remember i said foundations it didn't say foundation he said foundation if the foundation see the s if the foundations which means he's not talking to born again christian because our own foundation is one and his name is called jesus he said if the foundations be destroyed our foundation which is jesus cannot be destroyed that's why god laid it himself and the bible said because god before god laid him god said he tried him he said he was tried a stone tried a foundation tried so jesus is a foundation built by God for believers, tried by God himself. God took him through all kinds of things. Jesus went through all kinds of shame, depression, sadness, opposition. He was led like a sheep to be slaughtered without arguing with his shearers. Jesus was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was laid upon him. And then he died the death of the cross offering himself in obedience to the father for our sake 
So he was tested and tried by the father. And the father now said, this one is a sure foundation. So Jesus is called a sure foundation. It cannot be destroyed. So the foundation of a born again Christian cannot be destroyed. And then we now looked uh, the last episode, episode at the word righteous. So who is the righteous? The psalmist was addressing. The righteous here certainly is not the righteous of the New Testament. Because the New Testament had not begun. Had not started as at that time. And the right, because there are two types of righteousness. There is the righteousness which is of the law. Paul talked about it in Romans chapter 3. He said Moses himself talked about the righteousness which is of the law. So Moses himself said, your righteousness is of the law. You know, so they have to inve inve uh, invent how to live right. How to put themselves right with God. That's why under the Old Testament, people punish themselves. Because they want to be justified. They want to stand in righteousness with God. You, you know, people do all kinds of things. They pour ashes on themselves. Sometimes, like if you go to Iraq, they'll carry machete and be macheting themselves, bleeding all over. Because they want to be righteous. They want God to accept their righteousness. Their right standing with him. So Moses talked about that righteousness. It's a righteousness that afflicts the flesh. Puts punishment on the body. It's always denying the flesh. But the righteousness which is for the New Testament is a gift of God. You don't work for it. It's God that gave us. In Romans chapter 5 verse 17. That's what he said. It's a gift. And to verse 19. So he said this righteousness that God has given to us, we cannot add to it and we cannot remove from it. So we don't do anything to be righteous. We believe by faith to be righteous. In Romans chapter 5, in verse 1, he said, therefore, put Romans chapter 5, verse 1, verse 1, look at what he says. In Romans 5, he said, therefore, being justified by faith. The word justified here equally means being made righteous. To be righteous. We, are, we became righteous by faith. Not by punishing ourselves. My fasting can never make me righteous. So I am righteous because I believe in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ gave me the gift of righteousness. So this, my righteousness, cannot be taken from me. Because the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. I don't know whether you get that. So if, it is a, if it's of God, it can never be taken from you. Because it's a gift. Alright. So having said that, we're going to go into today's one. But I just tried to give a brief background of you know, the uh, former episode of the teachings. You know, so that everybody can, we can all be on the same page. All right, let's start from today's home. So we now see that it is very clear, you know, that foundations, put that uh, Psalm 11, verse 3 again. We now see very clearly, according to the psalmist, you know, that foundations can be destroyed. It is very clear. That's what the psalmist is implying. Foundations can be destroyed. Foundations. Any foundation that is not the foundation of Jesus can be destroyed. <laughs> no matter how beautifully well designed, no matter how it started, no matter who built it, the psalmist is alluding to the fact that foundations outside of Jesus Christ can be destroyed. It can, be, it can disappoint. It can fail. You know, after my last teaching on, uh, on, uh, on this Psalm 11 verse 3, a pastor sent me a message. You know, usually I don't read all those negative messages anymore. You know, the, you know, I don't read them. I have people that read them. My son and the rest, they read them. And then if it is negative, they don't let me see it. You know, but if it's positive, I, they bring it to me. So if the, neg if the comment is going to be negative, don't worry yourself because I won't see it. You know, they will delete it before I see it. All right. But somehow, this pastor is a known pastor to us. You know, so they, they made me to see it. And then the pastor is saying, um, uh, you say Jesus Christ is our foundation, sir. You say Jesus is our foundation. If Jesus is our foundation, what of the foundations our forefathers, you know, his grandfather, his own father built? You know, should he just go like that? I'm surprised that a pastor does not understand what he's talking about. He is a baby in the word of righteousness. That's what Hebrews chapter 5 says. He's a baby. He's not supposed to be a pastor. We should give an usher that understands this knowledge to pastor him. I'm not trying to insult him. It's the truth. It shouldn't be. Babies should not be pastoring a church. That's why we have all kinds of things going on. 
That's why we have all kinds of belief system, all kinds of uh, trouble, you know, stress, you know, satanic ideas and agendas being uh, uh, peddled outside, you know. I don't care who your forefathers are. It doesn't matter who your grandfather is and whatever it was that was their foundation. The Bible said if any man, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Don't you understand that? Once you are born again, once you have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are a new creation. Your lineage, your lineage with your forefathers' lineage has been severed has been stopped, has been cut off. Your new lineage now is Abraham. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, in verse 16, he said, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. We don't know you by your biological father anymore. We don't know you by your biological mother anymore. Even though he's your biological father, he's your biological mother. Now that you are in Christ, your lineage spiritually has been changed. Now, you don't have a background of your forefathers anymore your forefathers now is abraham and so what you have around you in you for you working with you is the blessings of god that the blessings of abraham might be meted out given as a portion of inheritance to the gentiles that's what the bible said you know so the psalmist has made it clear that foundations will be destroyed Everyone who is trying to live his or her life based on foundations apart from Jesus, that person is going to come into trouble. That person is going to have a major trouble. And so somebody say, Sir, how did you know? How did you know that? The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 12, from verse 25, because the Bible is very clear. Look at it. Hebrews chapter 12. I have I have it here. Let, let, let them put it up. Uh, um uh, because strategies are going to fail in these last days. Human strategies will fail. In the absence of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, strategies will fail. In the absence of the knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ, strategies will fail. The psalmist has said it already. It is there. It is prophesied. And then in the New Testament, look at what God said in the New Testament. He says, seeing that you refuse, I mean, see that you refuse not him that speaketh. He's talking to born again Jews, people who are born again Christians. He said, Make sure you don't refuse the one that is speaking. For if they escape not who refuse him that spoke that spake on the earth. You remember in Exodus, when God spoke to the children of Israel on that mountain, Mount Sinai, you know, the Bible said, Look, everyone who did not listen to what God said then, the Bible said they, they did not escape. So he said, even we ourselves. Now, we should not disobey what the Lord, by the Spirit of God, by the Holy Ghost, is saying to the church, to believers. He said, if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Now, he's speaking from heaven to us, by the Holy Spirit. Next verse, verse 26. Watch verse 26. Thank you, Lord Jesus. His voice shook the earth at that time, on Mount Sinai. But now, I mean, who, uh, sorry. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he had promised. God has promised after that episode of the shaking that happened in, in Exodus. God has promised saying, yet once more, I shake not the earth only. I, I will also shake the heavens. So God said, look, a time is coming. There's going to be another shaking. He said this shaking this time is not just going to be like it was in Mount Sinai. That the earth, there was a heavy earthquake. Even Moses himself trembled. He feared when God demonstrated that these people, <laughs> they need to know who God is. So the same thing. He said he has promised there is going to be another shaking. There is going to be a heavy shaking. This time, he said not just the head. Even the heavens will be shaking. The next verse, verse 27. Watch 27. 27 says, And this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made 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 that those things which cannot be shaken may remain the only thing that will remain is jesus as our foundation is faith in jesus 
We are entering into a season, into a period. In these last days, everything that man puts his trust will be shaken. God said, I promise. God said, he promised. Once, once more, whether the things on earth or in heaven, everything will be shaken. Everything. If you look at what is going on in the churches today, be, ministers are not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They want to please the people. A minister said to me once, he said, sir, he said, you know, uh, we are trying to uh, reach the people so that they can come to church because people don't want to go to church anymore. I said, why don't they want to go to church anymore? He said, you know, uh, we, have to, we have to make the, the gospel, the message, you know, to appeal to them. Ah! Hey! Egwege! See, see compromise. See compromise. Look at the devil. Look at the devil accessing servant of God. Penetrating the minister. Who cares? The gospel still remains the power of God. You can't help the gospel. It is the gospel that will help every man. The gospel will never change. Am I making sense? Now they are preaching motivational speaking. They are preaching finance. They are preaching uh, 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 skill acquisition. They are preaching leadership. Leadership is failing in the world. God is shaking everything that can be shaken. He has promised that he will shake everything. Everything is shaking. Look, even those who went to Harvard are committing suicide now. With all their Harvard certificate, they are committing suicide. People who went to Amsterdam University, Oxford University, their heart is failing them. Because the world must come to a realization that they need Jesus. Before Jesus comes back, the world will be shaken. The world will be made to know that they need Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus. Strategies will fail. Seven steps of principles. Five steps of principle. Fifteen steps of principle will fail mankind. And they are failing already. Look, we are even entering a period very shortly. Money will fail. Money. Currency. It will fail. It will fail man. Uh, some of the apostles, how do you know? It has happened before. There was a time that money, currency failed everybody. In the book of Exodus. Look at it. It's there. Let me show you. In Genesis chapter 47, verse 5. Genesis 47, verse 5. Put it up, please. The book of Genesis 47, verse 5. Foundations will be destroyed. Hoping that your Christianity is to be pursuing enemies. Enemies. You will see. It will be shaken. It's going to be, God said it's going to shake everything. Everything will be shaken, including Christians. Every time you go to church, all they are teaching you and you people are chasing after is your enemies. All the enemies of my father's house, all the uh, uh, witchcraft spirit, all the budget disturbing me. It, look, it will be shaken. And you, then you will now see that after pursuing all those enemies and pursuing and pursuing, there is not going to be peace. There is not going to be peace of mind. There is not going to be a way out. Jesus only. The knowledge of Jesus is what God has given to everyone for stability of the souls of men. Look at it. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 47, verse, verse 5. And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father, um, let me be sure I got the right verse. Thy father and thy brethren came. Sorry, verse 15, not verse 5. I was wondering. You know, verse 15. Genesis 47, verse 15. He said, And when money failed, in the land of Egypt, money failed. People who had billion, it became like ordinary paper. The value for cash was withdrawn. God is going to shake everything shakeable. Don't put your trust, don't put your confidence in property acquisition and neglect Jesus. Don't do that. Don't put your confidence and trust in pursuing the enemies of your father's household and neglect the knowledge of Jesus. Don't let these men of God preaching motivational speaking. Don't let them distract you. Look, a shaking is coming. A shaking. Isaiah said, uh, 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 he, he said, I have heard from the Lord that a consumption is coming upon the earth. The earth is going to experience shaking. Only those whose confidence Jesus is will the Lord preserve. They are the ones he will hold together. He will provide for us. He will shield us. He will hide us in his secret pavilion. Not those of us who are going out. Look, if you want to learn about how to make money, go to school of business. It should not be taught in the church. 
the church, Zion, when we gather together in Zion, that is not where we should be teaching how to make money. I know a lot of ministers don't like me now. Who cares, man? I don't care. The gospel of Jesus is the way out. The gospel of Jesus is the way out. Look, God sent me to this generation to blow this trumpet now. To sound this alarm. A consumption is determined against the earth by the Lord. Everything that man puts his trust or makes his confidence will be shaken. A shaking is coming. Only those who by the knowledge of Jesus have rested their faith in Jesus Christ will survive the future. We survive the future. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Look at COVID-19. Eh, the whole world was brought to a standstill through COVID-19. And that is nothing at all. Aircraft, those who bought aircraft and always boasting about their aircraft. Their aircraft was brought to a standstill. Parked at the airport. Look at the heavens being shaken. And you think the heavens are not shaken. The heavens were shaken. That's why all the aircraft were parked. Billionaires could not spend their billions because you can't leave your house. Everybody quarantined, locked down. But the Bible said God still has something else, something else, something higher than that to shake the confidence of men, to find out where your confidence is. Please, I beg you, if your pastor is a motivational speaker, or speaker, rather, a motivational speaker, in the absence of the knowledge of the person of Jesus Christ and the gospel of Christ, pack your things and leave that church. Leave the church. Get out of the place. If all your pastor is telling you is that, you know, leadership, we need to raise leadership, where you get to ask, look, the vice president of Nigeria now is a born again Christian. And he's not a small boy. He's well educated. A professor of law. Look at it. It is not leadership that is the question that the church needs. Paul said, he said, I traveled until Christ was formed in you. When Christ, through knowledge, is formed in a man, through the gospel of Christ, through the gospel message, he is formed in a man, he will do well. He will love his, husband, his wife well. He will love his children more. He will stay at home. He will not run around town. He will not seek to do evil to somebody else. He will not envy somebody else because he will know and understand that the same Lord is rich over all. And this, whatever he has done for one, he can do for another. What we need is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The church needs to come back to the gospel message of Jesus. Stop compromising, oh man of God. Look, let me tell you, if I start preaching motivational speaking or lead, leadership skills, they are very easy to preach. Leadership skills. All I have to do is uh, get one of these uh, leadership books, read them, and then begin to preach them as the gospel. You see the deception of the devil. The devil is so deceived these men of God that they are preaching skill acquisition in church as gospel. So people come to church on Sunday morning, they are teaching them seven strategies of how to make money. I'm not against how to make money. There is the school of money. There is the school of business. Go to school of business if you want to do that. Go to university of, of, to learn economics if you want to do that. But when we come to Zion, where well, unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. Nobody should be made to leave Zion in our gathering without knowing about Jesus. Because whatever the person is, whoever the person is, a shaking is coming. And it is the knowledge of Jesus that is going to be our anchor that will stabilize us, that will not allow us to commit suicide, that will not allow us to lose our mind, that will not allow us to go into depression. Look at the way Christians are committing suicide now. All over the world. There's a pastor with over 5,000 members in America, in Florida. He committed suicide in the hotel room. I used to watch him in TBN. I've been trying to send message. I told my wife, I said, this message this guy is preaching is not of God. He's not preaching the gospel. He's trying to make people feel good. Self-improvement teachings. If you want self-improvement teaching, go and learn it outside. But when you come to church, we behold Jesus. As we behold him, we are transformed. We are energized, empowered to change into the very image that we are seeing concerning Jesus Christ. Oh! The psalmist said, if the foundation be destroyed, that means all, all, all other foundations, apart from Jesus Christ as a foundation, will be destroyed. 
the possibility is there. There's going to be a strong shaking. But for you not to be swayed, not to fall into it, that's why I'm bringing you this thing. Jesus is persuading you through me. God, can't you hear the voice of God through me? Can't you hear the voice of the Almighty God? Holy Ghost calling out to you through me to secure you. To secure you, oh man of God. The Bible said he has called us to be a able ministers of the New Testament. Look, let me tell you. Anybody can preach leadership. Go on. There are all kinds of books you read and start preaching leadership in the church. And then people start bringing you money. That's why you see that it's very easy because they want to make money. These pastors want to make money. You know, uh, prosperity teaching, skill acquisition. You need to... You need, I'm not against all those teachings. But it's not supposed to be in Zion. It's not supposed to be in the church. Everybody is looking for the shortcut to money, to prosperity. Your money will fail. A time is coming. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Just look at COVID-19 alone. Just look at COVID-19. Just because of COVID-19, everybody was locked down. So look at it. The Bible said in, in, in Genesis 47, verse 15, it said, and when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, so it's not just in Egypt, all over the world, money failed. Money failed. Money failed. Strategy is going to collapse. Strat human strategies is going to fail as we go along. Hey! See how Jesus put it? In Luke 21, verse 26. Look at how Jesus put it. Look at how Jesus puts it. Look at how Jesus puts it. In Luke 21, verse 26. Look at it. Put Luke 21, verse 26. I'm telling you, human connections will fail. I'm telling you, medicine will fail. Science will fail. God said, I promise I shall yet shake not the earth alone, even the heavens. He said that the things that were made might be shaken. The things that men put their trust in, that the things should be shaken. Let us see which one will survive. And the one that will survive is Jesus Christ. And everyone who puts their hope and faith in Jesus. And how can they put their hope and faith in Jesus without somebody teaching about Jesus Christ? Without somebody preaching the gospel of Jesus? And that's why he sent me to this generation. Look at it. Look at what Jesus said. He said, men's heart will fail them for fear. There are things coming that the, look, the heart of men will pant. I'm telling you. <laughs> Do you know how, how much, so much, so many people have lost in stock exchange? Just this few period of COVID-19. So many people have lost billions, hundreds of millions. Jesus said, the time is coming, the thing that will happen, the, 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 the dimension the earth will enter into, by the shakings that God will permit over the head, over the earth and the heavens. He said the heart of men will fail them for fear. For looking after those things which are coming on the earth. He said for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Everything shall, look, what, these things that men are boasting of. When you hear a man of God, his boasting is not about the gospel of Jesus. He's boasting how much he has in the bank. He's boasting about how, how many aircraft they have bought. He's boasting about how many universities they have built. Those things are going to be shaken. You will see. Watch. <laughs> so that the thing that cannot be shaken can remain. And the only thing that cannot be shaken that, that will remain is Jesus Christ. And faith in Jesus. I'm telling you. <laughs> you know when Jesus was born, two things were said. Two major things were said about Jesus. When the baby of Jesus was born, two major things. Number one, you will see the first one in Luke chapter 2 from verse 11. Put, put Luke chapter 2 from verse 11. When Jesus was born, you know, two major things were said about Jesus. Number one, let me show you. In Luke chapter 2 from verse 11, we're going to read from verse 11 to 14. He says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David, the Savior, which is Jesus Christ. He said, Look, this child that is born is Christ. This Jesus, this baby Jesus that is born is the Christ. Verse 12. Verse 12 says, 
and this shall be a sign unto you. And you shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Verse 13. Watch you. Verse 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, watch, watch the saying. What, what they were saying. Quickly. Verse 14. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Watch. He said, good will to men. The birth of Jesus brought good will to the earth. Woo! Brought peace and good will. So if you take Jesus out of the earth, peace and good will will be withdrawn. Are you getting the gist? The church is taking Jesus out of the church. So the church, peace and good will, is eluding the church now, like the world. See, see born again Christians committing suicide. I can I just can't get over that. See, born again Christian becoming discouraged because their heart does not have what to hold on to. Look, let me tell you, science has not been able to come up with solution to conscience. When a man do, does something wrong, there is no tablet or injection you can take to silence the voice of the conscience. But when I bring you the gospel, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ, it will not only silence your conscience, it will deliver you from your conscience. The Bible said if our conscience condemns us, it said God is bigger than our conscience. So that's what we need to teach about Jesus. We need to help somebody to know whatever it is that you have done wrong, Jesus loves you more than what you have done wrong. He loves you. Whatever it is that is your condition or your challenge, Jesus can bring you out of it. He said, whatever is born of God, overcoming the world. If it is born of God, if it is born again, it's an overcomer. Your challenges does not have the ability to ruin your future. It doesn't matter how many people hate you. It doesn't matter what the devil has said or has said or is saying or the witches and wizards have proclaimed in their covens. Look, let me tell you. When Jesus died and ascended, Jesus did not resurrect like an escapee. He resurrected a more than a conqueror. He resurrected a winner, a victor. Hallelujah. When Jesus resurrected, the Bible said he led captivity captive. And then passed through any dimension of existence. Before he ascended, he descended first into the lower part. So there is no part under the earth that Jesus did not penetrate. And then when he ascended, the Bible said he ascended above the heavens. That he may feel all in all. Woo! If you are dreaming and seeing t bad things for your dream, when you wake up in the name of Jesus Christ, mandate that thing never to repeat itself again. You don't have to apologize. Jesus ascended, feeling all things. He, he penetrated any dimension so that there is no sphere, no dimension that the presence of Jesus is not name of Jesus and we say in Jesus name all dimensions come to a standstill they come to another in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whatever is making noise around you like son of God as I bring you the knowledge of Jesus I command those things to find their level I, I charge them to find their level whatever it is in the name of Jesus Christ I decree it is written that whosoever the son of God shall make free is free indeed by the knowledge of Jesus I demand for your freedom you are free from the shackles of the enemy. Whatever was planned, imagined against you that is not of God, by the knowledge of Jesus penetrating you now, I overturn the decision of wickedness concerning you. Every knowledge of imagination, by the authority of the name of Jesus, I bind them in Jesus' name. I command you free. This is why we come to Zion to hear about Jesus. This is why we come to church to hear, so that when we close church, when we close church, Ah, the dimension of your boldness and confidence will soar. It will rise. Look, I told one man of God, you know, all these men who are preaching all these funny, funny things in the name of, uh, they have exchanged it for the gospel because they are trying to appeal to men. I told him, I said, the day you meet Jesus, believe me, you will never be able to open your mouth to talk about skill acquisition. Or leadership skills. <laughs> Look, 
if you want a man to be a good leader, not to steal money, you can't teach him leadership not to steal money. What are you talking about? Teach him leadership and give it, put him in the place. He will still steal. He will still ruin Nigeria. It is the gospel of Jesus we need. Someone say uh, Nigerian leaders are bad. Nigerian leaders are not good. The reason they are not good is because look at all the hospitals. They refuse to build good hospitals. Even the president of Nigeria, the Nigerian president, will travel abroad to go on for, for treatment. Look at Nigerian hospital. They can't do anything. The reason is not far-fetched. Their heart has not met with Jesus yet. You can't teach Nigerian leaders leadership skills. It will not work. Most of all the bankers went to the best universities. Nigerian bankers. They went to the best universities in the world. All the people in oil companies, these oil mugu, uh, mugus, mugus, all of them went to the best universities in the world. They are dealing with the best brains in the world. But when it comes to misbehaving, not building hospital, not building good roads, not building electricity for the, for the people, those university skills jumps out of them. But when Christ is formed in a man, the love for his fellow man will develop. You know how? God said to Jeremiah, I will take away the stony heart. He said, I will put the heart of flesh. The heart of flesh is what they need. And that heart of flesh only comes through Jesus Christ. Someone say, yeah, Apostle, how did you know that? In Isaiah 53, let me show you. Go we'll punish the devil. Isaiah 53, verse 11. Look at it. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 11. I'm still going to show you the second one. But let me just show you Isaiah 53, first, verse 11. Look at Isaiah. He said, he said, the Father, God, shall see the travail of Jesus' soul. You know? Ah, all the beatings Jesus went through, even to the death of the cross. He said, He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. So, the Father is satisfied with the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. So, whatever you have done wrong, Jesus has paid the price on your behalf. Don't let your wrong hold you down. Am I making sense? The Father is satisfied with the, with, with the travail of Jesus' soul. But this is, that's not where I'm going. Look at where I'm going. He said, by the knowledge of Jesus, by his knowledge, shall my righteous servant justify many. So freedom from demonic oppression comes through the knowledge of Jesus, through preaching Jesus, through the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If I want you to be a good leader with all your university, all I have to do is to preach the knowledge of Jesus to you. It will deliver you from wickedness. It will deliver you from not loving your neighbor. It will deliver you from hating and walking in hatred and bitterness. It will deliver you from, doing, from living for yourself alone. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Some people will give money to anybody to show off. But when they tell them, give money to the gospel, let's preach the gospel, their heart become hard. With all their intelligence, what happens when you die? What happens when you die? Because this money, they are not going to bury you with it. I must as well tell you the truth. They will not bury you with it. I don't care how many slangs you speak. That's why you see that some ministers, they start speaking slangs. The gospel is not speaking slangs. The gospel is not slangs. The gospel is not speaking American slangs. Go to America. They are youth are no more going to church. You know why? There's a generation of ministers, bishops, pastors, apostles, prophets, who just came up, all they do is to hoop. Mm -hmm. Your God is going to do it. And I know that God is in this place. In Jesus. Ah, I say to you, oh, my brethren, that when you meet God, and God is going to take your problem, and, and, and God have mercy. Look at, look, look at, look at the man of God. He's hooping. He's hooping. He's hooping. He has lost his way. Who sent him to hoop? There's a man named Dr. I.V. Dilliard. I.V. Dilliard. He said, he, I, I listened to his testimony. He said he used to preach and hoop. He said because as he's teaching, or I mean, as he's preaching, the people, they are not excited. They are waiting. They say he has not started yet. So, they say he, he, his anointing has not come yet. He said then, when he, he has talked, 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 I noticed that the people are not responding. To get them to respond, he will now switch 
and then begin to tweet, uh, begin to whoop. Mm -hmm. I love the Lord. Uh, you feel me right now, and then you know that God is in this place. You, I said, God is in this place. I said, God is in this place. He said, one day when he finished service, he got home in the night. The Lord came to him and said, what are you doing? Who sent you to hoop? I said, feed my sheep. You are entertaining my sheep. He said, the Lord told him that day should be the last day he ever hooped again in the church. That is how Diliad did away with hooping. He set the people down to begin to, begin to teach them the truth. So many people left the church. They left. As soon as they left the church, he kept on teaching the people the truth. Now there are over 12,000 people. People came to hear the truth, the knowledge of the truth, for them to be stabilized. The gospel is not hooping. And then there are some who think that the gospel is Greek. All they want to do is share Greek. The Greek word for come. The Greek word for go. What is the Greek meaning for eat? What is the Greek meaning for Adam Belefu? <laughs> There's confusion in the body of Christ. What is the Hebrew word for? I don't want to sit down. I'm sorry for speaking vernacular. <laughs> they are looking for look, confused people. What are you doing? Go to, go to Israel. The people that are speaking the Hebrew themselves. The language that they are speaking does not bring the knowledge of Jesus to them. As a matter of fact, the Jews still hate Jesus with passion today. They hate him with passion. Of course, we understand. The Bible says slumber has happened to them in part. You Gentiles, that, this, that slumber has not happened to you. What are you doing? A pastor is doing program in his church. He call it uh, Exusia 2020. How do you win so with the Exusia 2020? How many souls, how many uh, unbelievers understand Exusia 2020? Can't you see confusion and foolishness in the heart of ministers? See confusion and foolishness. Why have you decided to make the gospel complicated? Paul calls this gospel. He said the simplicity of, of Christ. He calls it simple. Just tell somebody about Jesus Christ and who he is and what he has done and what he can do for you, in you and through you. You are complicating G uh, Jesus. You, are compli you will give account to Jesus Christ. Just watch. All your uh, 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 suggestions. All your... Um, is it a suggestion? What do they call it? Exegesis. All your uh, uh, Latins and Hebrew and Greek, you know. Look, let me. Uh, someone say, uh, does that mean Apostle does not want us to look at the Greek and Hebrew? I don't, I'm not against that. But when you will leave the Spirit of God out of it, it is the Spirit that quickeneth. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 63. He said, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Don't leave the Spirit of God out of the knowledge of the truth. Because the Spirit of God came to bring the reality of the knowledge of the truth, which is Jesus to the world. Not the knowledge of the realities of Greek and Hebrew or Latin. Why this confusion? Why this satanic thing? The Lord is using me to call you to come back to the simplicity of the gospel. Come back to it. To your law. Alright. I said there are two things that were said about Jesus. At his birth. The first one. He said because of Jesus. Woo, because of Jesus. Peace and goodwill to the earth. Take Jesus out. Take the knowledge of Jesus out. Of any family. The earth. Any business. You will see that peace will beat the person good bad. Right now. United Nations is spending billions of dollars. In budget every year. Looking for peace all over the world. But I have the answer to peace. And Miguel, in Ephesians chapter 2, the Bible said in verse 14, for Jesus is our peace. Take me to United... Look, I need to get to United Nations now. Let me talk to all those leaders. Just give me five minutes with them. Let me explain Jesus to them. As the prince of peace, when Jesus is embraced, peace will come. I don't care the Al-Qaeda man. When he finds Jesus... He will know peace. Oh, oh, and there will be no need to spend any money. That's why men do not want to hear about Jesus Christ. Look at the second thing that, have, that, that was said concerning Jesus. Put the second thing up. In Luke chapter 2, verse 34. Luke chapter 2. 
Verse 34. Look at this. Everybody, look at this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at it. Look at look chapter 2, verse 34. This is Simeon or Simon, whichever way you want to pronounce it. You know, that, that man that has been in the temple and the Lord told him he will not die until he sees the Christ. This man is very old and blind. As soon as Mary and Joseph carried Jesus into the temple, the Lord spoke to him by the Holy Ghost. He said, the one that I say you should be alive until you see before you die has been, has been brought in. So Simon went to them and asked them to bring the baby to him. As soon as they brought the baby to Simon, he began to prophesy by the Holy Ghost. Look at what Simon said. And Simon blessed them, blessed Mary and Joseph, and said unto Mary, his mother, the mother, the, the, uh, 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 the mother of Jesus, Behold, this child is set for the rise and falling, the rise and the fall and the rising again of many. Put, put the HS, H, um, uh, HCSB translation for me, please. Put the HCSB translation. Yay! Yay! Put it. Look at it. Look at what Simeon said. He said, Then Simeon blessed them and told his mother Mary, Indeed, this child is destined to cause the fall and the rise of many. So because of Jesus, a lot of people will enter depression. Because of Jesus, a lot of people will receive joy and be glad. Because of Jesus, a lot of people will be depressed. They will be sad. They will know headache and high blood pressure like never before. Why? Because they have decided to set Jesus aside. They have decided to play down on Jesus. And then the ministers are replacing the gospel with what men wants to hear. With what people want to hear. The Bible said the reason Jesus was born. The reason Jesus has entered into the world. The reason Jesus is existing right now is for the rise and the fall of many, not few. So as people are rising because of Jesus, many will be falling because of him. If there's anything you need to know in these last days, it's Jesus Christ. Don't let anybody preach covenant to you. Don't let them preach feet washing to you. If after this my teaching, you are still going for feet washing, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. I, I'm, and I'm saying it without apology. You are in a big time trouble. If they are still giving you mantle to carry, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. Jesus should be your focus and he should live in your heart by faith without holding any means. Don't let any man of God show you staff. Is there any stick here I can use as a staff? You say, I, I don't come out with this staff all the time. I come out with it once in a while. If your geo show you any staff, run away from that geo. Take, take off. Speed, come on, take off quickly. Because the reason for Jesus is for the rise and the fall of many. The rise and the fall. How will Jesus be the rise and the fall of many? Let me show you. Hey, see Bible. Jesus. See Bible now. Let me show you why Jesus will be both the rise, the rising. It will be the cause for the rising of many destiny and the destruction, the fall of many destiny. Many, many, many destiny. Let me show you. Watch this. See, see what the Bible says. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I mean chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, from verse 22. As I, as I get ready to close this thing, let me show you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm there. Come on. Take this thing from, from me. Because this thing is worrying me. I need to take fresh air to bring this, to bring this knowledge raw. It's raw. What are you talking about now? This is raw. Raw gospel. Raw gospel. From verse 22. See what the Bible says. It said, For the Jews require a sign. The Jews are put amplified translation, please. First Corinthians chapter chapter number uh, uh, one from verse 22. He said, For the Jews, he said, While the Jews demanding ask for signs and miracles, you know, the people asking for signs and miracles, you know, church members, some people all they want to see is. Uh, man of God, professor, what do you see for me? Man of God, what is the Lord showing me? What is the Lord showing you about me? If you see me, I, if you see my face, I prophesy. Look at all the lying devils. He is speaking lies by the devil. If you see my face, I prophesy. God he didn't send him. That's a familiar spirit. The Bible says we should judge all spirit. Every spirit, if it is the spirit of God, it points people to Jesus. Jesus said the Holy Ghost will not speak of himself. But what he hears of him, Jesus Christ, he will make the knowledge of Jesus a reality to us. He unveils Jesus. That's what the Holy Ghost does. 
Not a prophet that comes and says, um, if you see my face, I prophesy. I tell you straight what is wrong with you. That's an abalist. It's an abalist that has disguised a wolf that has, is put on shepherd's skin. Am I making sense to you? Look at it. He said, while the Jews seek, uh, demanding, ask for signs and miracles, the Greeks, they are pursuing philosophy and wisdom. The Gentiles. The Greeks are the Gentiles. The, the Gentiles are pursuing philosophy. And they are pursuing wisdom. That is what all these motivational pastors are doing. And they have big, big congregation. You, you know, they, they are preaching philosophy. They are preaching human ideas, human wisdom. Go and look at them. They have big, big churches these days. A, a, a man, and you will see them with suit. They are always wearing suit. As if the definition of a man of God is suit. Our definition is not suit. Paul said in 1 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 1, I mean chapter 4 verse 1, he said, let every man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ. Everybody should regard us as the ministers of Christ, not as a philosopher. I am not a philosopher. I am not to preach. I am not sent to preach the wisdom of men. No. I am sent as a minister, as an ambassador of Christ, as the apostle of Jesus Christ, to teach the gospel of Jesus. I am not here to teach seven strategies or how to be better in life. There is no seven strategies to be better. When you meet Jesus, your life will improve. Come to Jesus, your life will improve. He said, come to me. All you that labor and a heavy lady. He said, I will give you rest. He didn't give principles. He didn't give seven steps. When you meet with Jesus, stop. Get out of that. Get out of that church. If your pastor, all he's preaching is philosophy, ideas. He's not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Get out of the church. Start a church. Go and start church. Look at this. You that is learning this teaching, you are learning this gospel. See my passion now. See the way I'm talking passionately. Move out of the church and start your own church. Start. There is no special way to start church. There is no special anointing to start church. Where two or three are gathered, Jesus said, I'm there. If your pastor is preaching philosophy, if he's preaching human idea, wisdom, get out of the church and go and start church. Move as many as you can. If your pastor all is preaching about his covenant day of judgment, Covenant day of prosperity. Covenant day of peace. That pastor has not started ministry yet. I don't care how many people are in that church. Move. Go and preach Jesus. Preach Jesus. That's what. That's the commission that was given to us. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And the gospel is defined by Paul in Romans chapter 16 as the message of Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. Not, not philosophy. Not human idea. Now, go back to that 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Go back to it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. Put, put, put that amplified translation. Woo! Oh, time has gone. There's something. Anyway, let just, let, let's just let's, let's run through it. He said, why the Jews demanding, demandingly ask for signs and miracles? He said, the Greeks pursue philosophy and wisdom. You know, that's what all these pastors are doing. They, 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 want, to be show, they want to show us that they are very intellectual. They went to school. They are very intelligent. You know, they went to school. They want to, that's what they want to show. The gospel, Paul said in 1 Corinthians, haven't you heard, haven't you heard, oh man of God, that it is the illiterates, the poor, who are richer in faith. They, are, they don't struggle to believe. They are rich in faith. Anyway, let's go on with this thing. Look, look, look at verse 23. Look at verse 23. He said, for we preach Christ. We are not like this men of God. Who are trying to preach philosophy and wisdom. He said, We our message is very clear. It's Christ. Yay! We preach Christ, the Messiah crucified. Preaching, he said, crucified. Preaching, which to the Jews is a scandal, an offensive stumbling block. Yay! He said, that springs a snare or trap. He said, and to the Gentiles, it is absurd and utterly unphilosophical nonsense. Are you seeing what these men are doing? Because they know that their congregation, they don't want to hear about Jesus. They, because they'll be taking pastor, leave that thing now. You know, <laughs> we are too mature, we are too advanced for that kind of thing. All this preaching about gospel, Jesus, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is coming. Let me tell you, let me tell you, this same Jesus is coming. That's what that angel said to them. He said, This same Jesus that you see that is taken now and received up by the cloud, he said, He's coming in the same way. Jesus is coming. 
And if you don't know Jesus, your people do not know Jesus as a man of God, you are in trouble. If the people under your care do not know, if they know how to make money, if they know how to, uh, 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 how to be good leaders, if they know how to everything, minus knowing Jesus, you are in trouble, oh man of God. I'm telling you, you say, Apostle James is scaring us. Ah, I want to scare you to death, self. Ah, hey, I'm not scared you yet, too. I need the juju to scare you. I want to really scare you until you come back to Jesus Christ. Come back to religion. When God called you into the ministry, he didn't call you to be preaching, motivational speaking, philosophy, wisdom. It is as you go on, you now saw that that one is simpler and it brings in more money. That's why you shifted. Your message, your assignment is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got to go because of time. Ah! Oh, one day I'm going to talk to time to stop and stand still until I finish. What are you talking about? Why should I be running all the time? You know? Finally, let me just skip all the other things. Let me give you Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 26. Hebrews 10 from verse 26. I'm going to read to verse 29. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Alabodagayo. Every man whose heart as a minister pants after Jesus. They are the ones listening to me and inviting me these days. You know, a lot of ministers are beginning to call me. You know, from different, you know, a minister called me from Mozambique. Another minister called me from Kenya. Another minister called me from South Africa. Another minister called me from Zambia. Another minister calls me from uh, 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 Zimbabwe. You know, even from Kenya. And guess what? All of them are inviting me to come and preach and teach this gospel of Jesus Christ. And they want to hold ministers' conference apart from their own conference in their churches. You know, look, wherever you are hearing me, I want to appreciate you. Please continue. Don't be ashamed. Don't compromise. Don't be like that minister that went on CNN to start. He became apologetic. He said there are so many ways to God. God punish the devil. There's only one way to God, and his name is Jesus Christ. And I have no apology to anybody. I have no apology to anybody. So ministers, let's stand up and be counted for Jesus. Stand up and be counted for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't apologize. What are you apologizing to? A man that will die? An ordinary dust? A man that is today, tomorrow is gone? Even if he's as rich as Bill Gates, Bill Gates has gone into hiding because everybody hates him now. But Jesus is still Lord and Savior, the monarch of the whole universe, the emperor of heaven. He's still speaking. Hallelujah! Let's stand up and be counted for Jesus. I am a minister of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed of it. If you don't want to send me money because of it, keep your money. Others will send me money. Jesus will move others. Look, even in your bitterness and anger, you will still send me money. He will use you to send me money to preach the gospel. I want to be on television to preach Jesus. I need you to help me. Send me money. I need money to be on TV to declare Jesus Christ. I don't have time for your enemies. When Jesus grabs your heart, your enemies will find their level. I'm telling you. Let's close with this. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. So willful sin is not fornication, adultery, you know, telling lies. Or those are their sins. But that's not what he's talking about here. You know, a lot of ministers, they just all they think about in their head is adultery, fornication. I don't know why that is their problem in life. Eh? As if it's a calling for them. Anytime they hear sin, adultery, fornication, that's all they are thinking about. You don't know that faithlessness is a sin. Paul said whatever is with, done without faith is a sin. And these men of God who are preaching holiness, they are always doubting. Mm. Even when I preach, the, as I'm preaching Jesus now, they are doubting whether it is true. That's sin. There's no sin higher than that. Unpardonable sin. Let me tell you self, about unpardonable sin. Because a lot of people don't know the unpardonable People are asking, what is this unpardonable sin? Is it sin against the Holy Ghost? When a man sin against the Holy Ghost, it's unpardonable sin. When you are born again, you cannot sin and an unpardonable sin because the spirit of god lives inside of you and the bible said in Ephesians 1 you are sealed with him you know so the only people that can commit unpardonable sin are the unbelievers and what is the unpardonable sin the only sin that cannot be pardoned is unbelief in jesus till death finish the death of jesus cannot cover it when a man dies without accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. As soon as he checks out of his body, Jesus can't help him again. It's an unforgivable sin. That's 
the only sin the death of Jesus does not, does not uh, cover. But every other sin is death. Covered it. And may go uh, see Bible now. Oh, let's leave that in. Maybe next time I'll teach on it. All right. So here he says, for if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, he said, there remained no more sacrifice for sin. There remained no more sacrifice for sin. So it is not fornication he's talking about. Because there is still sacrifice for sin or fornication. Anybody who fornicates, God can forgive you when you turn to him. Ask him when you repent. So there is still sacrifice for fornication. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. So he's not talking about physical or all those physical sin. That's not what he's talking about. Read it, read it in context. I didn't write the Bible. Look at it. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth. So the sin is against the truth. The truth. The truth is not an action. It's a person. So he says, there remains no more sacrifice for sins. For against the truth. Okay, look, let's okay. Look, put the next verse. Watch, watch, watch by yourself. You will see that a VJ is not talking from his head. It's not my idea. Watch by yourself. He says, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and a fury indignation, which shall devour the adversary, opposers, people who oppose. So you see that it's not fornication or stealing. People who oppose. Next verse, verse twenty-eight. Verse twenty-eight. I'm, quickly. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Go on, verse 29. Is where I'm going finally. He said, Of how much surer punishment suppose he shall be thought worthy of um, who had trodden under foot the Son of God. Are you seeing the truth now? So what's the willful sin? The person is rubbishing Jesus. A lot of ministers are rubbishing Jesus. They don't preach Jesus anymore. He said they are treading him on that food. They will well, leave Jesus. Well, let's preach something else. Not only Jesus that is in the Bible. Ah! What sacrifice can we use to help that man of God? No other sacrifice can be given. Because Jesus is the only person that gave the sacrifice that can help us. The man is pushing Jesus aside and is preaching all kinds of things. And he said, and I counted the blood of the covenant. The blood of the covenant of Jesus. Wherewith he was sanctified as an unholy thing. He's now teaching all kinds of covenant. Covenant of salt. Covenant of backyard. Covenant of compound. Covenant of uh, graveyard. Covenant of vengeance. The covenant of um, all kinds of covenant. He is he, he, he setting aside the covenant of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, what kind of punishment do you think God will give that man? Look, all these men of God who are busy preaching all kinds of covenant and setting aside the covenant of Jesus. Look, you will hear Boza on the day of judgment for setting the covenant of Jesus aside. Ah! He said, and had... No, no, no. See, put that on first. Let me finish. He said, and had done despise unto the spirit of grace. You see, every time you set Jesus aside, you don't want to talk about the grace of God. You now begin to, you know, invent human philosophy and ideas of how human beings should do this, how they should do that, how they, you know, how, they, you know, how, how, how this and how that and blah, blah. Look at some ministries. You know, some ministries, all they do is that they envy themselves and I even heard that in some denom they say de there are denominations in Ni in Nigeria, big churches. Those all those denominations with parishes, you know, they are doing juju against each other. You know, they go to Abalis, go and take juju to do against this pastor. They so do, because they didn't transfer him to one parish for one lucrative parish where he can be making money. They now send juju against that one. Or if you see this other one in his parish, that the parish is doing well, he's teaching well, he's leading the people well, you know, he's envious. He wants them to remove that person so that he can go there. He now go and meet Abalis to do juju. Look, look at, look at, look at, look at what they turn, look at what they turn church, the Christianity into. See, and they say they are ministers. And when they hear me teach, such men, such pastors, such ministers, they will get angry with me. What is the apostle saying, sir? Is he only Jesus that is in the Bible? You are, you are supposed to know that his heart is not circumcised yet. He has not met with Jesus. He's, he's, a, he's a wolf. You know? The Bible... Did you put on that translation there? Did you, did you put on that translation? Let, let's, uh, let's close with this other translation. Look at this. 
He said, what then? Of those who despise the Son of God. Are you seeing the willful sin? The willful sin is not fornication or adultery or telling lies or or or, or what against them? Or or quarreling, fighting. No, that's not willful sin. Willful sin is to deliberately set Jesus aside and be teaching something else. He said, Who treat as a cheap thing the blood of God's covenant? Ah! I don't which purify them from sin. Who insult the spirit of grace? Yay! Yeah! Who insult the spirit of grace? Just think how much worse is the punishment they will deserve. Motivational speaking pastor. You whooping pastor. Mm -hmm. And God is going to do it. Don't worry. Jesus is waiting for you on that day. You will hear Boza. You will hear Nguyen. Because all you are doing is just, is just that you are celebrating yourself. And then there are some men of God, all they do is preach about themselves. Yesterday, I was somewhere. I sat down on a chair. When I stood up, three women looking for the fruit of the womb sat down on the chair. They became pregnant immediately. See, he's, he's, pre he's preaching himself. A liar. Look at him. He's preaching himself. Paul said we do not preach ourselves. Our testimony is Jesus Christ. I don't talk about myself. Have you heard me talk about myself, sin? I, I, I don't have time for it. I am not sent to preach myself. I have a master who sent me to preach about him. In the name of Jesus, I pray that the spirit of God overwhelm you in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not come under the falsehood that set Jesus aside in the heart of men. In the name of Jesus. No man will, set, will, will bring you under that influence. Every satanic and demonic action to cripple you spiritually. In the things of God, I bind in the name of Jesus. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord be merciful unto you. I bless both you and your household. And I declare in the name of the Lord Jesus, from today, what you stand to represent is blessed. Because it is written that you are blessed, I pronounce you blessed. You are blessed going out. You are blessed coming in. Blessed is your mind. Blessed is your body. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. In the name of Jesus, blessed is your job. I release ideas to you by the Holy Ghost of what to do in Jesus' name. The Lord make you a pillar in his, in, his, in his kingdom. You will support the gospel. Financially, you will become strong. God give you helpers. Send helpers to you. In the name of Jesus, I ask that the Father send angels to help you now. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Everybody, let's celebrate Jesus. Praise God. Wherever you are, just give Jesus a clap clap for him. Celebrate Jesus. I thank God and I love you. And I know that this thing has blessed you. Now, everybody, I need you to understand wherever you are, that Jesus is right there with you. And because he is there, I need you to know that you and I, we are called for a reason in these last days. And it's to preach the gospel of Christ. I love you with all my heart. And that's why you see that I preach with passion like this. And uh, I want to thank the pastor from Canada. You know, there's a pastor from Canada that anytime I'm preaching like this, he projects from his phone uh, on the big screen in their church and then people are watching I mean in America you know and then another pastor in Canada Pastor Paul <laughs> and make sure you're able to let you know I got your message thank you so much there's Pastor Paul in Canada that is doing the same thing he even screen guarded snap the thing the way they put it on TV he snapped it and sent it to me he said Apostle I want you to know that I mean we too we are watching you know on, on television with everybody you know so Thank you for your encouragement, Pastor Paul. You know, every one of you, wherever you are, please send me encouragement. You know, don't mind all those ones that say, why is Apostle asking for encouragement? Why is Apostle asking for encouragement? You know, and he's a pastor. You know, a lot of these pastors, I'm ashamed, of, I'm ashamed, honestly, to call myself a pastor because of them. But we will not allow ourselves to be distracted by it. Please send me an encouraging word, you know. Uh, that you, can you put that, that thing up? Um, uh, the, I have a WhatsApp number you can use to send me message of encouragement you know i need it paul say pray for us you know i said that one time a pastor sent me a message and said why are you asking them to pray for you you know is it that you don't have faith oh, wow. <laughs> you can't please people you know so i don't have time for all these people <laughs> so if you want to send me a message of encouragement please just use uh, this uh, number uh, uh, this whatsapp number plus two three four 
you know, it's right there on the screen. You know, just do it. And then I want to ask you to send, to give your offering, send your tithe, your offering. You know, thank you, all of you sending offering from uh, America and Canada, South Africa, and, and in London, in, in England, uh, and then the rest of Europe. Thank you so much. Even in uh, Kenya, Ghana. Thank you. We, we are get, I'm trying to let you know we are receiving your offering. You know, so wherever you are, you can. Use Zenit Bank, Zenit International. You know, just use Zenit International. You know, Zenit Bank, and the account number is one zero zero one four eight eight one six seven. Any other account number anybody sent to you, I am not part of it. You know, we have just one account for everybody, and that's the account we use, Zenit Bank, one zero zero one four eight eight one six seven. I thank God for using you to join and to support me. I know that you are watching and you are using your device right now. Once we close, send your offering. Don't procrastinate. Don't postpone it. You know, the Lord bless you. And until I see you on the next edition, this is Apostle Victor James, AVJ, and I am signing out. Bye-bye.